This and all talks at the 2019 JavaScript for WordPress conference are brought to you in part by our sponsors Pantheon, a high-performance hosting platform with agile developer tools. Check them out at pantheon.io. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this uh, next talk in the less technical track of the uh, JavaScript for WordPress conference. Today, I'm joined by uh, Rita Best, Anja Dibunze, and uh, Jessica Duante, and talking about uh, yeah, just studying JavaScript in a study group. Without saying much more, I will give the microphone to uh, Rita to introduce what we're doing. Hi, everybody. Uh, greetings and uh, welcome. And I'm happy that you're here. So before I begin, my name is Rita, as you know, and I am a front-end developer. Uh, I specialize mostly in custom WordPress sites, custom blocks, and the occasional um, attempt at uh, JavaScript uh, single apps. So uh, before I begin, also I'd like to thank all the sponsors and especially Fabian, you'll actually get to hear from him because he's part of the team that we will be talking about today. So I'm here to talk to you about a study group and the benefits of actually being part of a study group. So uh, before you roll your eyes and kind of step away and say, what? Um, I'd like you to stop and think about this from a perspective of being a professional and having to navigate the crazy um, world we live in where there is this constant growth of new information, data, new um, frameworks, and just trying to keep up. So if you take uh, Matt Mellenweg's challenge uh, from 2015, where he kind of challenged us all, all to know JavaScript deeply, um, you find yourself, especially if you're a freelancer or if you are part of a small boutique agency struggling between managing time, money, effort, all the things that go into making that possible. And of course, trying to learn um, and keep up with the skills that are needed for this brave new world. And by that, I mean, if you take the WordPress ecosystem and you look at what is Calypso, you look at what is the new block editor, or even the customizer, you can no longer sit on the sidelines. You have really got to stay current and you need to constantly keep in the loop of the learning. Uh, what does that do? It makes it very difficult to um, balance life. It's difficult to balance work and it's difficult to balance what goes on as far as how you learn. And if you learn in a silo on your own, it's even worse. So. For me, what precipitated my growth was I ended up uh, taking Zach's JavaScript course, uh, bootcamp, I should say, and then um, I naively thought I got this, you know, it's going to happen. I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of breeze through it. But you quickly learn that there is an awful lot of material that you don't know, and you are balancing your work, you're balancing your life, and you're balancing your learning. And with a boot camp, everything is at an accelerated pace, and you have a huge amount of data to get or um, material to get through. So uh, the only common denominator with the people I'm about to introduce is that we were all participants in SAC's 2018 uh, JS boot camp. And the backdrop to this is that uh, if you think that we started in September. In November, I think it was actually November 7th, uh, Gutenberg as being part of the core uh, build of WordPress dropped. So there was an awful lot of anxiety, an awful lot of opinion, and an awful lot of, uh, you know, the angst of knowing and what did that mean ramification wise to both work and to play. So when I met these lovely folk that I'm about to introduce, uh, we did know each other, and the only thing, like I said, we had in common was the fact that we were all part of a uh, boot camp, and um, we had to get through it as best we could. So uh, do I think it is the most optimum um, way of learning? I do, but I think that the supplement to all of learning, no matter whether you're taking a boot camp or any kind of course, is to have something like I'm about to share with you. And this is a, a space, a place, a group of people who you can think more deeply about what you're learning. That's the problem with so many of these um, 
courses that we take and certainly how uh, pressed we are for time, there's never really the opportunity to go deeper and to share and question what you're doing. So with that, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce um, my team, I call them, because they are uh, three people of seven. And uh, what's really cool is we meet every weekend, uh, every Saturday, and have done since the boot camp, uh, right through until, um, well, yesterday. <laughs> so, And here we are again today. <laughs> So we practiced, we did all the things we needed to do. And uh, I think what would be beneficial is to actually have them share their experiences with you on the benefits of being part of a study group and being professional and managing all these other things that go on with your life and still being able to learn. And I think that's the piece that I'd like seasoned developers and you know students new to code, I think this is a process that you can you know, blend into your your daily, um, I guess, routine and have something where you have just a set time to meet with some people you can share deeply and ask those those odd questions that you have nobody else to ask. So with that, let me kind of go around and have everybody introduce themselves and then we'll kind of kick off from there. So Jess, why don't you start? Sure. Hello, everybody. My name is Jess, and I'm tuning in from Toronto, Canada. Uh, Rita, thank you so much for inviting me. It's so awesome to see you all here at this great conference. Um, so I am a web developer as well. I have my own freelance business that I've been running for about five years, and I'm also an educator. So I spend uh, time that I'm not coding websites and primarily WordPress websites teaching uh, up north in Northern Ontario in an indigenous reserve. So that's me for now. Uh, yeah. Fabian, why don't you take it away? Sure. Um, some of you might already know me from yesterday, the workshops or today being the MC of the Gutenberg track. But for those of you who haven't met me, my name is Fabian. I live in Germany, close to Frankfurt. And I also own a small WordPress agency that does some custom sites and mainly focuses on theme development. But uh, yeah, so I've been uh, also developing for about five or six years in the WordPress uh, space and really got active through uh, the bootcamp and just uh, once Gutenberg dropped, uh, really in there. And all of us kind of decided that we wanted to share a fun fact about ourselves. So um, when I'm not on a computer, when I'm not coding, when I'm not working on stuff, I like to uh, be out there and do some blacksmithing. So that's how I spend my time. Uh, well, now I forgot to add that piece, so I'll just say that uh, I'm a total geek. Uh, I had to own that space. Um, yeah, I collect stamps and I like to play board games, but mostly, you know, like backgammon or chess. So, uh, Anya, why don't you kind of chime in and add your two sets? Hello, it's great to be here. Uh, my name is Anya. I come from Munich. Um, I'm a front-end developer with design background and work for our media agency here called Resono. And, um, but I also do some WordPress pages on freelance basis. Um, I developed for Word, uh, WordPress pages for more than 10 years now, and I'm looking forward and I'm very thrilled about the JavaScript challenges it, that comes along with the new job. WordPress code. Apart from that, fun fact, um, I love traveling to Scandinavian countries and um, currently I'm practicing my Swedish for my holiday this year. <laughs> and also I love play with my little one when I have the time. When you're not learning JavaScript, but right. see, the answer to that is, is we teach her JavaScript early, so then she's not doing what we're doing, learning it late. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, just so everybody knows, we're actually one of seven, or there's three of us here, and we're part of a team of seven. And a shout out to our other teammates, Amber, Alan, Karen. Thank you for all the support to get us up and going. And uh, certainly for the last year of, of uh, both friendship, shared knowledge, and um, just being part of, of a wonderful group. So 
what I thought would be important is in this particular scenario, you get to see that everybody here has some um, real life issues and trying to balance. And given that, I'd like to kind of toss it around and get some of your input from what the benefits were to you personally. So let's say, let's start out with, you know, what were some of the goals when you first signed up to, you know, do the boot camp? And in comparison, having done the boot camp, here we are now, we have uh, a study group, and this is what got us through. And one thing I will say is uh, we'll address some of the other courses that we've taken just a little later on. And if there are questions, by the way, feel free to just start listing them, and we'll come back and address them right at the end when we've had some time to kind of give you, some, more than likely we'll answer some of your questions as we go through this. So just out of curiosity, Fabian, did you have any personal goals set before you started? And sure. you know, where are you today? Yes, so um, at the beginning when we first decided to uh, create a small study group for ourselves within the boot camp um, that we all attended, for me personally, it was um, just a way of, well, the reason why I joined was just to get other people, get to know other people who were in this with me, who are at the same uh, place in their lives and their uh, learning process and just kind of sharing, connecting about our different struggles, our problems and just, yeah, having a group of people that you can talk to, that you can talk about all the different problems, all the different approaches uh, with and just that made it so much easier to get through a very high pace bootcamp, for example. And then it grew from there and uh, yeah, it gave me so much. We have a very, a very good um, culture in our study group. We are all, we feel very comfortable sharing everything. It's, there are no stupid questions. There isn't anything that you have to be ashamed of. And so it's, it's been a great place to just have this um, comfort level and it gave all of us so much um, yeah, just self-confidence and in learning new stuff and asking these questions. I think that's the thing that I would offer the most is having, you know, I, I um, what I've noticed and I'm going to kind of share just stepping in here for a moment. A lot of times we have to roll through a course and you have a set period of time and then you have to, you know, you're, you're always at a race you never have a space where you can actually take time to think about what you're learning. And, you know, <laughs> a boot camp is not a place to think about learning unless you have something that's really going to be there to help you get over those moments. Um, Jess, what were your thoughts? I mean, when you first start, signed up and did you have some personal goals and, you know, like yeah. where did it end up with the study group? Yes, for sure. When I, I started, much like you described, uh, Rita, in that with that anxiety and angst about Gutenberg dropping, and that's why I joined uh, Zach's boot camp originally was to not get uh, caught behind everybody because my my entire business is really wrapped around WordPress, and I was so afraid that as soon as Gutenberg came out and and JavaScript became so much more heavily used uh, in the platform that I would not be able to give my clients the best that I could. So that's how that's why I joined. But the study group, um, which initially was just to for us to all get through the boot camp, uh, ha has just become such a, an amazing part of my my professional life as a developer. Because way beyond the boot camp, I mean, it's been a year now. I think that's where the best part of our group came out. Uh, because you know there was a lot of material to cover in the boot camp and. Uh, so much that we're still covered going back to and, and, and all those other courses that we've looked at. Um, really, you guys are sort of like my, the team I don't have as a freelancer. And uh, it's a place where I can ask all the questions that I'm, I don't have anyone else to ask or that I'm afraid to ask uh, publicly anywhere else. You guys are the ones that I can go to. And, um, you know, there's, there's been so, so many times where I've had a doubt about a project that I've been building and asked you guys for opinions on what I should do. Um, Amber, who uh, does some support work for a plugin for LearnDash, uh, she found me once on a, on a, 
a question that I submitted to Learn Dash, and she saw my name and she contacted me and said, "Hey, I'm going to help you." So it's amazing how much in my professional world you guys have become a part of it, and um, yeah, it's it's just such a an awesome thing to to belong to. I think that's the key. Just saying that this is not your this is not your study group from high school or from university. Um, I just I cannot I cannot talk, I cannot emphasize enough the richness of information and knowledge that gets shared amongst us um, in a way that just it, 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 it exceeds anything I ever anticipated and it exceeds anything that I ever uh, thought would happen. And here it is, like you, I have to say I'm in exactly the same boat. It is a, it is a part, I actually talk to you guys more than I talk to some clients. That sounds amazing, <laughs> but that's the fact. <laughs> So, Anya, how do you feel? And I think of, of what's important here is, you know, you're both. You're also a mom, uh, as mom of a little girl. Um, you have a whole family. I mean, there's a lot that goes on there that you ma have to manage um, just to get and stay abreast of some of the learning that we've had to, you know, kind of uh, get our heads wrapped around in the last twelve weeks. Well, the twelve weeks of boot camp, and of course, this whole year. Yeah. And that's always why I'm five minutes late for our study groups every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started bootcamp last uh, last year uh, because of that reason that I really have very few time and I never find the time to learn online courses or um, so I thought like I really commit myself to this time frame very intensive. Um, time frame and so I finally get myself to learn JavaScript to be um, in the up to the current hot <laughs> JavaScript topic. What's the new framework? <laughs> yeah, like the React, yeah, the and, whole, yeah, yeah, and um, also because I wanted to, I I mo mostly develop. WordPress and my colleagues at work, they do a lot of other things. They do all this full stack, um, React, view, whatever stuff all the time. And they are really like, uh, I really wanted to catch up with that a little bit. And um, so I had the opportunity and I took it and I was really um, wanted to do everything to keep up with the pace and to survive boot camp. So I joined the study group because I want, I thought I could have, need some help with that. And I found it and I'm really glad I'm part of this study group. Um, and I enjoyed also the time we were gossiping about Gutenberg, about the new stuff going on. And it was not all, not only a professional learning group but also a support for me to keep up learning and to keep on yeah like as Tony said being brave and draw well, the I line think, and be well I, I think what you're getting at yeah yeah no I think what you're getting at is there's so much material out there and you can't keep up. I mean, whether it's blog posts or whether it's podcasts or whether it's the Gutenberg documentation. I mean Bottom line is there is now actually eight of us who are seven of us, and I forgot to mention Brezzo. So Brezzo, you're flying, but know that we're thinking of you. Um, that is huge because as we all navigate and have our kind of areas that we enjoy, kind of uh, the channels of of knowledge that we seek, we also come back and share within our own group, and it just helps get you up to speed quicker. You, the data is not just a fire hose being dumped and trying to figure out what do I need to know now. And especially when we've been in the boot camp and we've kind of followed through a sequence of learning, um, you know, now just because we're all in the same boat and you have Mr. Google open on one tab and you have the Gutenberg documentation on the next tab and then your app and God knows, you know, at some point your computer blows up, but you can still get on Slack and say, hey guys, I'm stuck, show me what to do or can somebody, you know, point me in the right direction. So I think that's one of the most um, amazing pieces that has 
evolved out of our study group. Because I, I'll share honestly, I never saw where we are today when we first started this. And I think it's just one of those amazing evolutions um, of people collectively working together and sharing. And I think that's the biggest piece. So uh, with that, I'm gonna kind of just t check off and then we'll talk about these more in more detail. Following the actual boot camp, we also participated as a team, but also as individual teams. So let me kind of rephrase that. We approached a hackathon as a group, but in individual, we paired up into individual teams. Uh, we had three teams of two, and uh, Zach basically kind of uh, threw us into the deep end without a lifesaver or, or an inner tube and uh, said, here you go, uh, let's design or develop or create a single page headless app and WordPress app. And uh, we were all kind of in this moment of, okay, now, now the moment of truth, you take this knowledge that you've learned from the boot camp, and you have to apply it. So I think regardless of the fact, um, I was stunned at how well this worked and how we were able to move through this process. So just to give the audience a little bit of a background, um, Fabian's uh, teammate is Amber and she's out and about, uh, she's actually in the channel there and um, Jess is going to actually speak for uh, um, Karen and Brezzo and then Anya will speak for myself and our team. So why don't we discuss that? Let's just take that a little step further and talk about the hackathon and what came from that. So Jess, why don't you take it from the beginning sure. with uh, Brezzo? Yeah, well, I'm and super excited to talk about Karen and Brezzo's app. Um, so uh, like you were saying, every, every team is building their own uh, single page app using WordPress and creating a Gutenberg block. And that's what Karen and Brezzo did with their awesome app called Rescue Me, which was um, a really adorable app that allowed multiple rescue uh, animal organizations to uh, put up their animals for adoption into one place. So the site could pull all their information from all these different puppies. And, um, and, and what was great is that you could filter by your own needs as a, a potential owner uh, and also be matched with them. So they created a Gutenberg block and then um, they used uh, a React app to pull that information and and displayed on their app. And uh, I speaking with Karen about this, you know, this was, she's also a freelancer. It was her first time working on something that challenging with someone else. So uh, it was an awesome experience to follow code standards, to use GitHub and really collaborate on code together with someone else and make it all come together. Uh, and they also did a lot of work to make it accessible. Uh, in a way that uh, they hadn't really done before to make it keyboard accessible and to think about what those accessibility needs might be. And that's where I got to chip in a little of my support on the silence because I wasn't able to participate at this time uh, and help them to find some information on making apps more accessible. Um, and I also learned, so I just want to say, learned so much from you guys doing the hackathon and it really has We've taken so much from that into the, the overall group in continuing on to work with GitHub together on exercises and continuing to practice um, that kind of pair programming uh, as a whole group. So yeah, such an amazing experience to do that. Can't wait to see all those results. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing that I, I would also say what I thought was a good, um, instead of being caught up in a track of we all have done these projects or these courses where everybody ahead of you has done the same project. And, you know, it kind of gets old. It's, you don't ever see the world outside of that um, window of what you've done. And so in this particular case, what was really, and I think it's one of those underused tools within the WordPress community, uh, hackathons, you know, outside of that, a lot of other, um, languages, especially like Ruby and, and I mean, other will say outside of the WordPress community tend to use hackathons to really grow skills and help people learn uh, apart from supporting for whatever needs. It can be, you know, uh, a nonprofit 
whatever. But in this particular case, Zach didn't really provide any guidance. He just said, figure it out. And the challenge then is a student learning and trying to pick this up is how do you architect this? How do you, how do you work in a team? How do you process and communicate, especially given the fact that we're all on different time zones and we're trying to figure out how to uh, build something. And, um, you know, I think the interaction of that was just amazing. And so Fabian, why don't you, yeah. yes, yeah, it, in so many other ways, it's a complete model. So Fabian, why don't you talk a little bit about your, um, your background and uh, your app with, with Amber? Sure, yeah, like you just said, uh, I partnered up with Amber and um, we were building a site pretty, basically all of us used a similar stack. We all used a WordPress site, built a custom Gutenberg block to store some information into the WordPress meta fields to then use the REST API to get our information within React. But then all of us took different approaches of how to actually structure our app and just the implementation was very different. Some of us used frameworks, some of us were trying to do everything by hand. And so that was very interesting. And uh, we, some of the goals we kind of set out for ourselves was to, uh, it was very early with React hooks and we just started learning it. And so we wanted to incorporate React hooks and do everything on a, a hook based. And, really and don't forget WP scripts. That was a nightmare. <laughs> and Fabian has a wonderful ar a wonderful article on how to use that and not deal with half those dependencies. So <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that's a big point. No worries. Uh, yeah, but just all of those things. And then we also, my personal goal was to try out some unit testing in React and just having those personal goals in there. But one thing that I really took from the entire bootcamp ex or from the entire hackathon experience as a group was that all of us were working on our own small uh, projects and um, yeah, just spending time doing that. But we used our regular meeting time every Saturday to share different things. For example, mm -hmm. we were uh, doing a workshop on how to use GitHub properly, how to do some code review and they're doing pull requests, working on doing just some of those things and sharing all the different bits of uh, tooling that we were using and getting all of us up to speed on um, yeah, just so we all felt comfortable with all the different tools. Then all of us used Netlify to deploy it and one group was a bit ahead. Mm -hmm. And so they uh, were sharing how to do all of that with us. And so having the study group actually made the hackathon experience so much more, so much better, so much more interesting because we were all able to benefit greatly from each other and still learn so much, but then don't keep that knowledge just to ourselves, but also have all the others benefit from all of that. I think that's that's the key right there is just the ability to share whether you use it or not you start it's it's sinking in I always say it's the noggin is aware and you start thinking about even your own work in a completely different way especially when you start to see how it's been used you're not struggling in a moment of should I use it shouldn't I use it you've seen it already being built and in this case three different ways and I should say an app a react uh, you know, single page app with a backend, with a WordPress backend, and then just the whole process of that, not only the, th the thinking through the discussions we had, some of the laughs we had about it, um, trying to architect it. There is many hours that Anya and I spent back and forth just trying to, you know, like, are you sure, should, should we do yeah. it? Yeah, how do we do this? How should we include authentication? Should we in include you know, a search feature? These are things you don't get to really have com a, a conversation about without a group. You can't mm -hmm. have a conversation with yourself. Uh, they lock people up for doing that sometimes. So my thought is, is that you have to sit there and have somebody where you can, I mean, this is the benefits of being part of a team if you're working in an environment like that. But I also think teams should do this more often where it takes the pressure off of work and just have the time to think and talk more deeply about something you're building or you're passionate about and learning. Yeah. So why don't you take it away from where we started? Um, our project idea was for uh, was something for agencies or companies that provide snacks and drinks for their employees. 
Uh, you could fill your snacks via WordPress block we build. And the headless app lets you quickly, like the end user, quickly check out the snack that would be added to his um, account and he could pay it afterwards. Um, we made this with, um, yeah, we used Material UI on the interface. Yes, material UI. We yeah. used uh, authentication feature, so um, search you feature. could log in on the headless app, log into WordPress, and buy something, and it would be saved in the WordPress database. Database. And yeah, still working, and we continued working on it actually after we uh, handed over our hackathon um was our our deadline uh we decided to tackle the things that we didn't manage to finish and we have a kind of beta version almost finished now yeah. so. well i think it's one of those it's where you kind of look back maybe in a year or so and say gosh look at how far we've grown what we did, just the mere fact, putting putting the stake in the ground and saying, I'm going for it, and we did it. We completed the, the boot camp. We, compete, we competed and completed the hackathon. And in all of those processes, there's been just amazing growth and the sharing of material. Um, Ray, just to answer your question, it doesn't, it may not sound like a, we don't have a structure. The term we use is just study group because for us, we are taking a single um, area of study, which is JavaScript, and uh, we have used this time to actually focus on just that. It doesn't have a specific idea of this today and that tomorrow. It's just the only common denominator is we meet and we um, talk about what we need to do. And if there's times when it's off topic, that's okay too. So, okay, let's move from there. And uh, we've taken, we've actually done quite a few other courses outside of Zach's platform. Um, and I think this is like yesterday when we were doing one of our kind of uh, rehearsals, we were talking about what do we do, what do we start back with in uh, early, you know, towards the end of August, early September. And uh, we were talking about Frontify as being possibly the next uh, area that we're going to you know, kind of look at and see what goes on there and get ourselves familiar with it. Again, this is where, this is one of those key moments that I want to kind of share with you, the benefits of having a group of people that you, especially when I use the term professionals, I'm not trying to exclude anybody, but you're in, you already have a body of knowledge that you can draw on and now you're trying to up the game. I mean, you're improving skill sets. You're looking for ways to uh, make yourself more marketable or just be able to work faster. Um, and I think the problem that happens when you're a solo uh, freelancer or part of a small boutique, there's always that place. Something has to, you know, it's a trade off where you put the time, where you put the money, and where you put the effort. So, again, when you can just kind of zero out and say on a Saturday as we do between these three hours this is what I'm doing and everything else kind of has to wrap around that and I think it's been um, you know for me it has been one of the most amazing uh, experiences because it's the growth for my skills the comfort and that idea of being able to feel confident. I mean, reading code, just reading code with people who, you know, it's hard enough trying to go through and read code when it's in documentation, but to be able to have somebody do a peer review with you, kind of go through, talk about, you know, as we said, uh, the frustrations with ES Lint, trying to think through, you know, WP scripts. I mean, Fabian, Seriously, if you haven't seen this on Zach's, uh, I think it's on Zach's uh, blog, oh. you'll see an article from Fabian. He was one of the first to really roll with uh, WP scripts. And what happened, you know, he's one of those people who's on the cutting edge, always paying attention to what's new and out there. Same thing with React Hooks. 
I mean, Anya and I can attest to that. To 3 a.m., um, as we were laughing yesterday about this, the reality was we were in the you know last hours of the hackathon. We were freaking out because we couldn't get some things done. <laughs> and it turned out that what we needed really was not what we had planned. And long story short is we ended up using React hooks. Fabian stayed up with us. Fabian, you know, we reached out in Slack and he was like, okay, I'm here. And the funny part to all of that story was the fact that Anya and Fabian are talking in German and then they're having to stop and turn around and say, Rita, can you, in English. And the funny <laughs> thing was that I was doing better with the German than I was doing with the English. So, <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of, of benefits to uh, getting to know each other and do this. Uh, I don't think there's many people that would reach out and say, hey, can you help me out? Um, you know, like I think two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think many of us have uh, felt the intimidation and certainly uh, some of the, um, you know, it's like you don't want to ask the question because it's just a firestorm of people with opinions that doesn't help you solve the issue or move the problem any further. You just now have more stuff to worry about because it's like, oh, good God, that's not what I, all I wanted to know is how to do this. And you have, you know, all of this. So I think this is where having a group can really make a difference, especially yeah. if you're taking um, your skills and moving yourself forward. This is the way to go way better than, than just on your own. I would say it's very difficult to do it on your own. So uh, I'm going to kind of take it a little further. And uh, we've had some questions already about what kind of structure we have. So Fabian, why don't you kind of take that around and then we'll you know, each of us will kind of add wherever. So why don't you start, start us off. We can't hear you. Unmute. Yeah, sorry, ah. still muted. So basically everything we have set up for ourselves um, as far as rules go is that we, meet, we are meeting every Saturday and we've moved this once or twice, but Pretty much for every single Saturday in the last year, we met for about two hours each Saturday evening for us in the Central European time. Um, but have this time slot set in stone, basically. And then we decide what to do with that time, depending on what's currently going on. So for example, like I already mentioned in the hackathon, we used this time to do small workshops, small um, just presentations about different topics that concern all of us. And then another example of while we were taking the advanced Gutenberg course from Zach, we decided we wanted to um, actually include some more coding aspects into the learning um, process. And so we decided we'll split things up into a two week uh, process where in one week we would set out to watch, for example, the first five videos. And then on Saturday, we would meet, talk about where we got stuck, any questions we have, and decide on a small project that all of us were going to build over the next week. And then do that project over the week and meet again on Saturday to discuss our approaches, go over the code the other people wrote, and just share experiences there. And that has been really helpful to be able to adapt all just what we were doing. And uh, also, one of the main goals for ourselves is that if there's a problem, if there's an issue, if somebody wants to talk about something else, if something's going on in their personal life where they are really excited about something, want to share how happy they are, that is something that always is the first priority because we know each other very well now after spending a year um, together so that we want to be this very safe space where if there's something on your yeah, if there's something that you want to share, that you want to talk about, that is what we're going to talk about. And otherwise, we have those things planned for each week and pretty much, yeah, meet each Saturday and do whatever we want to do with that time. I'm going to step in for one moment and say, um, just to answer Ray's question, having had some time to think it through for him, um, so we, you know, it's hard because we're just so used to rolling. We're so used to each other. I mean, during the hackathon, we were talking to each other every day. Um, the thing that ends up happening in these kind of scenarios is you forget about the rest of the world and you just focus. And that has its benefits because you stop worrying about all the outside stuff. And, um, you know, I think structure, when you're talking about 
adults and you're talking about professionals, it doesn't, there's already too much structure. You have to give people a space to breathe and you're always, you know, trying to fill in for something that exists that, um, you know, give them, it, it, you, you build a relationship and then you build structure. The structure is not the most important part to what we do, at least for our group. We, we prefer to do, we like, we, let me put it to you this way. This has worked for a year and, you know, we have basically seven people and uh, we meet regularly, all seven of us. So whatever we've been doing has worked. And I would just say, it's not an idea of saying to you, one way is better than the other. We've had time to evolve. We've had time to participate. All of us have a say in what goes on. All of us lead each week differently. So there's no one person who's the leader. There's just a group of us and somebody makes the choice either the week that we're meeting. So on the Saturday, someone will step up and say, I'm going to be the moderator next week. And then we cover a lot of areas of interest that they may have that we need to focus apart from what we've set as our agenda for the next week. So that's that's basically as much as much structure as we have. This is not the place where they are held accountable to somebody else's expectations. They're held accountable to their own personal expectations, whatever they want, we as individuals want to meet. Yeah. So, okay, let's kind of roll from there. And uh, the next one, I think we're talking really a lot about uh, the benefits. Fabian, you've been great with that. And I think I've added... So how about, uh, Anya, let's talk about some of the tools we use just to go through this collaboration effort. Yeah, how to I mean, connect because learning. we connect from everywhere um, far away. Well, also yeah. different time uh, differences. So you have to find a time frame where everybody can work with it. And uh, we had, uh, of course, we started off with the Slack channel because we... Um, used it on the bootcamp a lot already. Also used the bootcamp Slack channel for uh, setting the time frame and um, talking. And first, after bootcamp, we made our own channel. And since then, we exchanged a lot of information there, all the news, we questions everybody has on work, on learning on code questions uh, everything is happening there and um for our meetup uh, for our that's meetup, kind of our central our central repository yes and uh, for our weekly meetings we uh, use google hangout and um, we also have group member that uh, transcripts the notes from our Google Hangout to Slack, so everybody, everything has is archived. Um, you never miss a link. And we have on our homework, homework um, weeks, we do our little projects. We set up a GitHub organization where we collectively, everybody can put in his code examples and we can um, look it through together and comment on that. Um, during our hackathon, we also used VS Code and the live sharing features. Um, yeah, so we did pair programming in that. Um, that was nice too. Fabian, do you have anything to add? I think she pretty much covered it. It's like you said, the Slack channel is brain, basically the brain where everything uh, starts out of. And then we use whatever tool uses uh, suits us best for the task. But uh, we kind of we are all running a pretty similar tech setup. But that hasn't always been the case. Some of us used uh, PHP Storm, for example, for a while. Or I myself came from Sublime Text before we got started. And uh, over the time, we kind of all grew to use a pretty similar tech stack. But that doesn't have to be the case. It's uh, we use our Slack channel as the kind of central point from where we decide what to use for, yeah, what's the best tool for the job at hand. Yeah, I think that's the one of the big keys to take away. If anybody's out there trying to think about starting one, 
you have to find common denominators and channels of communication because that's what keeps it going is being able to communicate freely and quickly. Um, and I think, you know, thanks to, as, as uh, Anya alluded to, Karen set up the Slack channel for us and pretty much is our, she tells all the archiving of any notes and stuff like that. Um, do I, you know, none of us really planned it. It's just some, these are some things that we find ourselves doing naturally. So we're comfortable and there's no resistance from within the group. It's just, let's do it. And, you know, like I said, Anya and I have become more than close friends as she shared yesterday that uh, her daughter like, where's Rita on the screen? So you kind of get <laughs> to know each other really, really well. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, uh, Jess, do you have any thoughts in the sense of how, it, you know, for what we use as tools to communicate? Has it been, a, I mean, just thinking about from the native side when you're up in Canada, I mean, that was one of the fun meetups we had is, I should say this, Jess had been, had just got there and um, we were hitting spring here in the States and uh, it was kind of warmer in Germany and there was Jess all the way up in Northern Canada and it was all <laughs> ice. <laughs> Yes, that was, it's, it's, it was such a nice window into the world when I was up there because it's kind of lonely. It's this very small community, and it was fun to show you guys my frozen lake outside my window. Yeah. Um, and But, yeah, I think Anya covered the tools really well. But I will say it's so awesome that, you know, beyond our weekly meetings and whatever we're focusing on in the moment, that everyone is so good about sharing information on our Slack channel and, when I fall behind of the crazy news that's constantly being developed in JavaScript land, it's good that I can just go to the Slack channel and be like, okay, what's the latest Rita shared? I got to go check out the latest link. Um, so it's really awesome. And I, I think we already talked about how wonderfully safe our, 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 our internal group culture is and how, um, yeah, how comfortable we all feel with each other. So yeah, yeah. the tools and also just everyone's, uh, personality and just attitude towards learning together has been great. Well, we were talking about rules and I was going to ask you to kind of, you kind of elaborate a little further on the rules. I mean, we don't really sit there um, with rules and I suppose if anything, we all come from the WordPress community. So we already have a kind of a built in, um, you know, respect for each other before yeah. it really rolled. And uh, I think, you know, why don't you kind of share some of that? Yeah, we don't really have rules, which is the great thing. And I, I, I was following Amber's doing such a good job answering questions on the chat. Thanks, Amber. Thanks, Amber. <laughs> I was looking at Ray's uh, comments about mastermind groups, which I'm not too familiar with, but uh, our group really doesn't have rules. And we, we have uh, best practices like Fabian reviewed, you know, we do meet every week. That's such an important part of uh, how we got to be so close and comfortable with each other is the consistency. Uh, we tend to choose courses together and work on the same thing at, at the same time so that we can discuss it. Uh, we don't like split off and try to conquer more material separately. We do it together and that's, that's key. Uh, but like we've said over and over again over the last hour, really what it is all about at the end of the day is how comfortable we all feel with each other to share our doubts. And in development, I mean, it's, it's, it, is, it can be isolating sometimes and, and uh, intimidating to ask the questions that you have. And uh, especially in the JavaScript, um, uh, you know, in JavaScript in general. So this group has an amazing culture of being mutually, uh, we have a sort of mutual uh, respect for each other and also mutual admiration. We all really respect, uh, admire each other and what we're doing and encourage each other and celebrate each other. And that's, I think that's the most important part. I, I'm almost nervous because like if look, you know, I've been kind of toying with going and looking for a job and being out and about uh, outside, you know, giving up the freelance side. And I've been thinking about what I've experienced with this team and, you know, the kind of work I was looking for was something that may be remote and how would that compare to this group? And it's almost like I want to see something happen. Like maybe we, 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 we land a huge job and 
we all do this and we can start our we, we can start our own agency it's just it's been an amazing you know the just just dealing with github and you know being able to reach out and say okay my pull request didn't work and i don't know why in the hell it didn't how do i fix this um and then everybody just jumping on with just complete like don't worry about it it's okay it, we'll just we'll we'll start all over again we'll go from there and um, then walking each other through these different steps and then, you know, the WP scripts and again, React hooks, that was enough to have, you know, I walk around the office in my, um, my home office and I'm going, good God, how, how am I meant to put all of this in my brain? And you don't, you just, mm -hmm. you, you practice. And I think that's the thing that's the nicest. So for me, I actually kind of, um, somebody had asked earlier, or, and we've kind of talked this through a little bit was what was uh, the possibility of um, having guests. We do invite people if we need. And by that, I mean, if there is a specific area that we need to pay attention to, where we have uh, somebody come in with a higher level skill set than we have and has the time and the inclination to share, we're always open. So again, one of our colleagues uh, had reached out to a colleague. She actually works for Automatic and we were able to talk to some people within that particular group on just understanding WP um, or WordPress uh, standards, code standards. And that was very, very helpful. Uh, and it was very helpful just to have somebody who you could, you could benchmark what you've learned against what they're sharing and realize that oh good okay this is good we're we're making headway and i'm getting there yeah so i think i'm kind of looking at time here and i see we're getting close to wrapping up and i don't want to overdo There's, it karen saying leave some time for questions there is one question we haven't answered in the question and answer yeah uh, what would that be how do we join such a group <laughs> so uh <laughs> yes this Thanks is a well, I'll let you roll with that for a minute, Jess, and then uh, I think we'll do some closing remarks afterwards and everybody can kind of add their two cents. So go for it, Jess, answer that question. Yeah, well, the best way <laughs> to join uh, a group like this would be to start your own, which we really, really encourage you to do. And we do have some information uh, the, in a Google Doc that we put together with some best practices that that have worked for us and of course anyone else can will probably create their own with time and the people that, that are in their group everything should will hopefully organically flow from the people that you're with so if you you know anywhere where you, if you're taking a, a, a class online or uh you're um you have you're communicating with any other developers on the subjects that you're interested in suggesting a group like this and starting one is such a rewarding thing to do and keeping cons yeah. that consistency over time um yeah like find a group uh find a community with a or build your own people with uh and step forward and ask some if somebody wants to start yeah i always yeah. say build your own build it in the way you want it so listen, just before we close out, I think it's important that uh, I'd like to give you each a moment to share some thoughts that you think would be helpful to the audience as takeaways. Um, so Anya, why don't I start with you and we'll kind of roll back through Fabian and Jess. Yeah, referring to my situation, uh, an important thing is for me to point out, get your Fox, all your family, everybody on board, supporting you with your um, effort. And if it hasn't been understand, my understanding husband and everybody, um, I wouldn't be able to do this. So talk to your family and your husband and everybody um, and what you want to do and ask them to support you. Yeah ask us many questions and I apologize, but thank you for all being here. And I certainly do um, hope you, you, you create your own channel and yeah. make it happen. Yeah. Great. Yes. All right. Jess. Yes. Everybody. Everybody.